Hello there guys and welcome back to another Forza Horizon 4 video on my channel. So yes, I am back after a week off. I am back for autumn and I'll be here to guide you through the autumn season, how we can complete everything regarding autumn, uh, all the challenges, PR stunts, etc, etc. I have you covered once again. Apologies I wasn't here last week, I was away, actually in Edinburgh, and I can tell you that Forza is very realistic. Um, but let's not get too tied into that. Let's get straight into the autumn season and talk about the rewards. But firstly, I do just want to uh, do just want to mention, and um, that because I have had a week off, um, I may be a bit iffy and I may forget things and I may say things wrong because I'm not in my usual form. So if I do, I apologise for that. But at least you know what's going on. Um, so hopefully we should be able to get through it without me getting confused too many times uh, and like the week before last uh, spring of series 37 let's try not to get malfunctioned and actually speak sentences in the English language so 50% then for this season get your horizon backstage pass I think for at least a good few months now in every autumn season we've basically had a backstage pass for 50% yeah, so you can spend that on any car in the backstage as long as you have not purchased that car yet in the backstage um, it's alright if you already own it but if you already purchased it from the backstage it will not let you purchase another one but there are plenty of other cars up for grabs in there you know, formula drift cars, fast cars, race cars, whatever you want but we'll talk more about that later and then for 80% you'll get yourself a Shelby Daytona um, actually really I think it's something like 8 million in the auto show so it is an auto show vehicle but very very expensive and is of course the OP B&A class car um, which I haven't driven much to be honest with you um, but I would highly recommend that you get it uh, this season is rather easy and with this guide you should be able to get through it no problem if you want to be perfect you can go for 100% but for that you will need to complete all the challenges plus every daily challenge and um, which releases every day but we'll talk about that in a minute as well so if you have, um, this season you also get the chance um, to get 50% of the whole series for another backstage pass so there's two backstage passes up for uh, up for grabs this week providing that you completed all or most of the summer season which even though I was away for most I've managed to complete uh, just a couple of days ago when I came back um, and then 80% which you'll be able to get probably in winter if you complete all of these two seasons um, is the bone shaker now of course with me being away when the Forza live stream was on I did not know about this and I only just saw it just before I was about to record and that took me by surprise actually so yes I would highly recommend that you do complete the rest of the autumn season to give you the best chance of getting that in winter or spring because it is a very very nice car of course it is banned from um, ranked adventure along with the Top Gear tractor um, but you can take it anywhere else and it is a really cool car to have and you can also watch the guy pull the thing when he changes gear which is quite amusing um, so other rewards that you can get this week then you've got the Lotus Elise from 2005 um, in the Team Lotus trial quite a nice car actually can't say I've driven it much but judging from the picture it looks like quite a nice convertible to drive around in summer of course it is autumn now so you'll have to wait another three weeks for that for the autumn games you get yourself a Ferrari F40 I'm fairly confident that's in the auto show but um, that doesn't mean that you shouldn't get it because the games you do not have to win so it's not like uh, you're gonna have to beat anything to get it so you may as well do it the three stunts um, you'll get a silver super wheel spin as usual whoops um, the grudge match championship you get yourself the 1969 Ford Mustang also a very nice car uh, overnight parts will get you the 1994 Nissan Fairlady Z um, I think that's the um, version S I think that one is uh, used to be really expensive not sure about it now because when I sold mine for 12 million and uh, that was probably months or even a year ago now and um, so I'm not sure the status of it in the auction as I don't use the auction very much nowadays um, only when I need to do a cl garage clear out I get rid of a couple of duplicates but apart from that I haven't a clue how much that is worth um, but I definitely recommend you get it because it isn't in the auto show and then for down under you'll get yourself a Ford XB Falcon um, again that is in the auto show um, but if you want to complete it then feel free because it will be an easy championship for you 
Um, so for the monthly rivals then, if you didn't complete it in summer when I wasn't here, all you need to do is enter it via the festival playlist or uh, in the rival section of your pause menu. Um, it is at the Asmu Heritage Circuit. Once you've entered, you'll be in the RIMAC Concept 2, or RIMAC, I think I probably pronounced that wrong. Uh, the Concept 2 from 2019, which is the all-electric two-gear hypercar that does pff, about 260 mile an hour. Has quite a lot of understeer, actually. Um, so all you need to do is post a clean lap on the Asmu Heritage Circuit, so no um, hitting... <coughs> No hitting walls, no missing checkpoints, and no rewinding. If it has a flag next to it, it does not count. All you need to do is get a lap without a flag next to it, and then you'll be able to quit, and it will mark it done in the festival playlist. For online adventure, if you haven't done it last week as well, when I wasn't here, I'll say it again, then all you have to do, if you haven't qualified for ranked adventure and it won't let you play it, that means you need to do quick play adventure. I'd suggest team racing as that's probably the quickest, or free for all racing, it's up to you, they're both more or less the same, apart from free for alls on your own, teams on a team, kind of self-explanatory. Um, yeah, racing is the quickest because games take normally about 20-25 minutes, maybe even half an hour depending on the loading times. Um, do reach tier 3 uh, in the racing category and then it will unlock ranked adventure just for that category then you go into the ranked adventure play one adventure you do not have to win again team racing is the quickest if you've qualified for that then that's the one you'll have to do anyway and then once you've done that it will mark it done you'll get a rank and you'll mark it done in the festival playlist so that is them for the photo challenge hashtag hoonigans paradise we've had this one before as per usual, take a photo of any Hoonigan car at the Express North Rail Yard. So take a Hoonigan, for example Hoonigan Focus, Hoonigan Iris 200, um, Hoonigan Escort, anything made by Ken Block. And then take it to the rail yard, which if you did not know is here, where it says Express Rail Yard, where the LEGO Speed Champions expansion uh, is at. And just go anywhere within there, maybe go in the building, maybe jump off the danger sign, try and land yourself on a train. It's completely up to you. Just get a picture with a Hoonigan and a bit of the rail yard and that will be uh, it for the super wheel spin and the 3%. Back in the festival playlist then. For the weekly Forced on Challenge, The Stuff of Legend, we had this one in Series 36 summer. Um, so last night, um, I usually do the Forzathons on Wednesday, one day before the season changes, uh, so that I don't have to do them in, um, in the same video or two videos on one night. Um, so we've had this one before, like I said. So last night, I decided to um, just re-upload the one from last time. Um, so I'll put a link to it in the end screen of this video, but just um, like it says in the title, read the description before you watch it, um, so, you, so you don't get confused, because obviously I will have said things that do not have anything to do with this season, or anything to do with what we're at now. It will have been about what um, what was two months ago, basically. Um, so by doing that you, in a classic sports car, the stuff of legend, you'll get yourself 100 Forslan points or 200 Forslan points if you own the Lake Lodge house, which is 5 million credits, which isn't too bad, actually, um, or it is free with VIP pass. And I highly recommend you do get this house because it gives you double Forslan points in the weekly Forslan challenge, as I've just said. Also in the dailies, you get 20 instead of 10. Uh, you get a bonus for completing the all dailies and the weekly, which um, is usually 30, but it gives you 60 in um, the Lake Lodge. Um, and then also falls on live events, so 10, 20, 30, or 20, 40, 60 falls on points, which gives you the best chance to order cars in the Forza on shop, such as this week we have the Ford number 2 GT40 from Le Mans for 300 and the Corning Z 1 to 1 for 200 which is actually really cheap normally it's 600 and 350 and so that's really cheap this week um, but I definitely recommend you do complete the Forzathons to get the Forzathon points anyway because then you can buy any cars that you want providing um, that you have enough Forzathon points so for daily Forzathon challenges I've already said they release um, every day, I said that at the beginning of the video, uh, same time as the season changes, so 3.30pm GMT or BST. Um, so you shouldn't really have any problems, but if you are, then let me know in the comments. So let's jump into the stunts then. So we haven't got a speed zone this week because we have a drift zone, which is slightly rare and slightly 
Um, I don't really know. Um, but I'll try my best to help you out with that one. Um, I'm not a pro drifter, but I consider myself above average because I'm kind of experienced. I have three stars in every drift zone. Um, a couple of them are top 1000 scores, so I kind of know what I'm doing. And I was doing a lot of drift adventure yesterday anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> right, so we'll jump into the stunts then. So we shall start with said drift zone because that is the one I am at currently. So it's Ashbrook Lane and you need 97,000 points. So that is only 2,000 more than 3 star. So if you 3 star this, I can guarantee that you'll be able to get the seasonal objective. As you can see, my PB is quite a lot, um, but that is nowhere near um, top one. Well, it is actually quite near top 1,000, but not quite. Um, oh my god, my controller's stuck. Right, so there's lots of cars you can use. I have a couple of really good drift cars. If you are quite, if if you're um, quite experienced in drifting uh, or you know what you're doing, you can use, for example, my Eagle Speedster. I have actually a video that was the E of my A to Z series, um, so you can look at the tune for that. I have the Hudson Hornet. Um, which I'm not sure whether I released the video for that, but that is H of the A to Z series, which should be released very soon. Um, I also have a couple of others, such as the Shelby 1000, HS3 GTSR, um, but just to make it life a bit easier for those of you who are real, rather new to drifting or you don't do it very often, um, I have got my Lexus RCF here with Rocket Bunny Kit, Massive Wing and V8 at hand. Uh, and of course drift suspension and um, so I have two tunes I have all wheel drive and rear wheel drive depending on what you prefer because it's a seasonal you can need to do what you prefer because then you're gonna have the best chance of getting it completed and um, so they are both uh, they are both S1 and um, so the UP in this one doesn't stand for updated it's actually underpowered because OP is overpowered um, so the all-wheel drive one, um, it isn't very good because it hasn't got much power like it says. It's only got 784 horsepower compared to the 890 in my rear-wheel drive one. Um, but feel free to use it still um, if you prefer all-wheel drive like I do. But I'm actually going to be using rear-wheel drive. That is a massive change for me. So 900 horsepower in this one. Um, same same kind of tuning techniques, same engine, etc. Um, and it's actually really hard to spin out. I was using it in Drift Adventure about five times today and yesterday. And it is so hard to spin out. I only spun it out a couple of times. And I am really bad with rear wheel drive. So I'd highly recommend that you do use this uh, rear wheel drive one. Even if you don't like it. Um, because you'll still be able to get it completed either way. But I'll let you pick. So the codes for them tunes are in the description. So I'm going to be going from this side. Just because you can get more speed. Um so you can go from both sides it doesn't really matter um, but I'm just gonna throw it in I would highly recommend that you get manual manual with clutches of course better because you can do what I'm doing now clutch kicking um, but normal manual will work fine that's what I started with when I started drifting but automatic is really hard to drift with especially in cars like this where it's constantly changing speed because it doesn't know when to shift and it's kind of annoying um, but yeah, I'll leave it up to you. So there you go, 126,000 points. Um, so that, as you can see, is 30,000 points more than you actually needed. Of course, I know what I'm doing, I know how to control the car, but you should still be able to get it completed. Just try not to spin it out. If you feel like you're going to spin, let go of the throttle and counter steer it. Just kind of general tips. Tap the handbrake to get the back end out if you need to. Um, that's all I can really say. You can watch drift tutorials, but they don't really help you in terms of season objectives, but that's just with this car. Any car, um, you should be able to get it completed with. Now we should move on to the danger sign then. So it's Broadway Windmill. You need 396 metres. Um, so that's actually 30.2 metres more than the usual three-star objective. Uh, no, it isn't. It's... Um, yeah, it is. No. Yeah, it is. 30 point. Sorry, I was getting confused then. I, it, the, the numbers were fiddling with my mind and I couldn't I couldn't figure it out. So we're going to be using the Koenigsegg 1 to 1. Just because it's in the Forzathon shop this week, I thought I may as well. And because it's so cheap as well. And um, So we don't need that much of a run-up, so I'm just going to go to about here. Other cars you could use then. Mosler, of course. Hoonigar's 200. Possibly the Jeep Trailcat. Don't know whether it's too heavy. 
and Ferrari Evo, Shelby Monaco, but I absolutely hate it. Anything that can kind of go like 200 mile an hour um, and, and is relatively light so that it's not just going to fall to the ground instantly like a truck will. Uh, I've no idea why I'm doing it in this car. I've just I've just set off. Uh, that's why I mentioned at the start if I do things really weird or say stuff that's wrong, that is why because I've had a week off and I've totally for lost the I've totally lost the plot. Right here we are then. My X class all wheel drive Koenigsegg exact one to one. It's not a really good tune. It's just kind of maxed out if you get what I mean. But I've put the code in the description for you. Um, so we're just going to reverse another 100 metres or so because I set off there. Right, if we set off from here we should be alright. Because the acceleration on this thing is mind blowing. So, right, we're already at 200. 230 into 6. Hitting it around 230 and we've absolutely blown it 449 meters nearly 450 meters so we've absolutely smashed that one so as you can see you don't need much of a run up as long as your car's got good acceleration you'll be absolutely fine right now finally for the speed trap same car same tune awkward crest 205 mile an hour required this way you could do i'm just going to start at the roundabout because then we're going downhill my PB was in the Ferrari, so same kind of cars that I suggested for the uh, jump will be able to do this. You might need to, if your car isn't very grippy, you might need to slow down a bit on the last corner, but if you're going the other way, that doesn't matter. So we're just going to set off again. As you can see, the acceleration on this thing is absolutely mental. Mind out for AI. There you go, 227, so we absolutely smashed that one as well. So that is the three stunts, very easy this week. Uh, you may struggle with the drift zone, but I can give you some more tips in the comments if you want me to. Let's move on to the championship suggestions then. I know we're running a bit behind schedule here, like about five minutes, so it will be a bit of a longer video, but I'll try to get through this the best that I can. So for the, so for the championships, as usual, I've selected two or three cars that I think will do the best in them events, and I've popped the codes for them, it, for the tunes, in the description. Uh, any others I'll show on the screen now, and then you can search up my game attack to find them. That's how I've done it for, for a few months now, I think okay so we'll start with the trial then uh, so it's road racing team lotus and you need an a class lotus who would have guessed <coughs> right we've just got a lotus which is down here right so um, the Lotus XEGS is really good because it's it's both fast and grippy at the same time um, with that rear wing, um, but I haven't got the front splitter on. It's also quite cheap at 85,000 credits, um, so this is probably one of your best bets. Um, similarly though, the Lotus Esprit V8 is even cheaper and that's also really fast and grippy, so whichever you prefer really. Um, the Lotus 340R tuned by Don Joe One Song. I'm not sure whether the tune's available anymore. Um, but you'll have to find out. Um, really, really slow. Max is out at like two mile an hour, but you can literally send it around the corners. Not sure how good it's going to be in this. Depends whether the circuits or sprints. Um, but I would recommend you take one of the other cars to be safe. Seeing as, it, seeing as it's a trial, and most of your teammates is usually crap. And then you've also got the Lotus 11, which is a bit of. It's not really a power build, but it doesn't turn very well with the engine and the twin turbo. Um, but it's up to you. I'd say the Esprit and the Exige are the best, in my opinion. For the games, then, that is at the uh, Bamber Castle, actually. So remember, you do not have to win, so do not quit for any reason, um, except you get disconnected or somebody's burgling your house, um, because there's no need to quit. So you can always do it again if you're that adamant about winning, but there's no point quitting, so just don't bother. So you need an S1 car from the 1980s. Um, so because you don't have to win, you don't really need a particularly competitive car. Um, but if you want to have a bit of fun and you want to try and do your best, um, then feel free to take one of these cars. So that's actually the car you win. Um, so I've got the Audi Sport Quattro number two. So that's it's not the normal one; it's the '86 one. 
Um, lacks a bit in um, acceleration in first gear, but once you get going, it's all right. The Hoonagar is 200. Um, obviously, one of the OP cars um, for games in S1 and S2. Uh, so this one's tuned by Waz News. I've put that in the description, um, but it's always going to be really good. Um, the MG Metro, uh, very grippy as well. I'm not sure how good it is in games, but it's very good in racing. The Opal Manta was, was actually originally tuned for games, but you can use it for racing as well. It's got tons of power, it's on rally suspension, so it's dead um, good for like off-road like the um, castle area. The Renault 5 Turbo normal one um, is kind of maxed out with the Turbo Rally. Um, my livery is inspired by um, a toy car that I had. Um, and I kind of copied off that. So if you want to download the livery as well, that would be muchly appreciated. It took me a reasonable amount, a reasonable amount of time. Um, so that one will be all right as well. Um, that's stock. Um, so yeah, I'd highly suggest you take the Opal, the Hoonigan, or the Renault 5 for that one. Now for the championships then, you need to be on at least highly skilled driver tires for these. Anything above um, is obviously fine, anything below you will not get the top rewards. Um, I normally drive on unbeatable because the AI aren't really that challenging, especially for an experienced player like me. Um, but if you want to knock it down to it uh, highly skilled to make sure you win, then feel free to do so. Um, so dirt racing then, grudge match, you need a C-Class Mustang versus Camaro. So when I came on before I didn't have anything tuned for this, so I had to tune two cars and I've put the codes for them in the description. So they're the only two that I can actually suggest here. So if I go to Ford first and I head across and there's lots of Mustangs actually. Um, so you've got this one, this is the one that I'm going to suggest, now even though it doesn't say Mustang in it, it is eligible, I have checked, don't worry I have checked this, the Ford S3D Co SVT Cobra from 1993, only 28,000 credits so basically a bargain, um, will do you very very well, it's got full aero on it uh, and also a bit of speed as well so that's a perfect balance in my opinion. Um, you've also got, um, what we're we looking for, Mustangs, I forgot then, um, Mustang, Mustang, Mustang. So you've got this one, but that's B class. You can use that one if you have car pass, but I haven't tuned it. That one's also eligible. Um, this one is, but mine's C class, so if you use that one, then that will also be eligible. Now, if I head over to Chevrolet, um, so you've got uh, it's Camaro, isn't it? So you can use this one, um, I haven't got it tuned, can't use that one because that's an Impala. This is the one I've tuned for you, again with full aero and lots of speed, also incredibly cheap so I highly recommend you take it. You've got this one and you've got this one, so there's, there's lots you can take but I just haven't got them tuned because I never really needed them if you get what I mean. Um, so you've got the Camaro Z28 and the um, Mustang SVD Core from 93. And then what have we got next? So dirt racing, down under, A class, Australian cars. In other words, Holden slash HSVs. So uh, if I go to HSV, so uh, you've got the um, 2014 HSV Gen F GTS, very grippy and fast. I updated that tune only a couple of months ago, so it's now even better. Highly recommend you take that one. Um, and then you've also got the HSV GTSR, uh, which is on rally suspension, so it's perfect for dirt racing. Uh, also very good, tons of horsepower there, so highly recommend you take one of these two. I haven't really got any Holden's tuned, so that's why I didn't show Holden. <laughs> right, finally then for the championships, you've got Street Scene, Overnight Parts, S1 Japan. So I think last time we have overnight parts, if I remember it was A Clash Japan, this time it's S1. Um, whoops, I've um, forgotten what I'm doing, country, and then we head over to Japan. Right, um, I'm just going to keep going until I get to S1. I'm just looking at the class right now, just to see when I get to an S1. Alright, oh, I can't even be bothered. S1 head back to Japan. It's taking too long! So you've got, this one's tuned by Dobra Mihai, who you may have seen on the channel. His game tag is Andrew, hashtag 9565. I've mentioned that in the description. You've got the Nissan GTR um, from 97, I believe. This is the R33. 
three, but I may be wrong, I'm not that big on Nissan, so my friend would tell you, but he's not in the video, so he can't tell you right now. Um, so I think this is pretty grippy, I'm not a fan of the Horizon tyres, but that's just what he put on the tune, and so I highly recommend you take that one, or you could take the Nissan R390, which is even grippier and faster, so whichever you want really. I mean, I'd personally take the R390, but if you want to take this one, I'm sure Dobra would massively appreciate that. That's about all I've got, I think. I mean, I've got that one and that one, but they're rally cars, so they won't do that well on the street. So that is it guys, thank you so much for watching today's video, I apologise for it being a bit longer again, I got a bit carried away, like I said at the start of the video, it is my first week back after a week off, so I'm always going to be a bit dodgy in terms of um, forgetting things and not doing things like I usually do, but I've tried my best, and um, next week I won't be here again, so I apologise for that, and I know it's winter, but um, I'd highly recommend you go over to Straight Off The Couch Gaming, search him up on YouTube, all one word, Straight Off The Couch Gaming. I think he's on about five, four or five thousand subscribers right now. Um, I watch him as well, um, he's one of the people that got me started when I started the game. He's a really good guy, I'm sure he'd appreciate your support. Um, so you can check him out next week if you want to, um, or even anybody else, but he's the one that I'd definitely go to myself. So thank you so much for watching again. If you are new around here, I'd massively appreciate it if you could subscribe to the channel. We've just passed 200 subscribers, so it's absolutely amazing, guys. I really cannot thank you enough. Um, tomorrow, we'll be doing a 150 subscriber live stream, um, the competition live stream, that is. It's been long in the waiting. I know you guys have been hyped for it, so it is coming tomorrow. I'll schedule it either later today or in the morning, so do be sure to look out for that. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. As always, check the description for any more info. And I shall see you tomorrow in the live stream. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you later. Bye.